Good evening. I think we're about ready to start. It's jam-packed and it's just a delight to see all these students here tonight. And I'm sure you're here on your own accord, right? Yes. It's wonderful. <laughs> right? And some of you might get some points from your teachers, which is awesome. Um, before I introduce our featured speaker, I'd like to remind you, if you haven't already, to please sign the um, attendance sheet, um, grab a survey and fill that out, and then just place it on the table when you leave. Also, our featured speaker wanted me to remind you that she has books and CDs for sale. Um, they're on the table where you sign in. And the proceeds do go to the shop 20%. for cops. 20% of the proceeds go to shop for cops. So that's really cheap. Shop for with the cops. Yes. They take the uh, shop with the cops. And they help them buy their Christmas presents. They help them pick them out. Okay. Our featured speaker tonight is Peggy Hinman who has been talking with you. Um, she is a certified eighth grade coach. In February of 2015, M.K. Mueller, whom is the author of the book on the table, and uh, director of the book Eighth Grade, invited Peggy to join the Mastery Leaders Program. And since then, Peggy has presented to athletic groups, middle school, high school, and college student and staff, businesses, agricultural programs, and youth groups. Uh, she, is in, she is convinced that the simple steps of this program will transform the lives of those who choose to put them into practice, and that our lives can be changed by the way we choose to look at it. I would like to remind you that if you are interested in um, inviting uh, Peggy to speak for one of your groups or classes, feel free to visit with her afterwards, and she would be happy to talk to you about that. So please join me in welcoming Peggy Campbell. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. What I would like to start with right now is I would like to ask you to turn to your neighbor and say congratulations. Turn. Congratulations. <laughs> so why did I start with congratulations to your neighbor? Because 80% of success is just showing up. And, and you all showed up. So congratulations to you. Uh, this, this program, Eight to Great, is based on this book. And, and I'd like to share with you a little bit about my story and, and how I got involved in Eight to Great. Have any of you ever known a, a person or a student who was very talented but just didn't quite measure up to their, their talent academically? I was one of those kids. Or some of you may know of athletes that are, are filled with physical talent, natural ability, but they never quite got to the level that they could have achieved. I was one of those kids too. People would say to me as a youngster, just be positive. What does that mean? And, and how do I do that? I, it, was, it was very confusing to me. Um, fast forward to when I became a, a parent and a teacher, I knew that the key to helping kids accomplish to the level that they, were, they had the ability for was actually by being positive. But I still was scattered with my positive thoughts or my positive activities until I found out about eight to great. And, and the process is eight steps, the eight highways. That is, that is what the book is about, but this is the foundation. I'd like to introduce you to the power pyramid. This is your power pyramid and my power pyramid. Is power a good thing? What do you think? Is power a good thing? I'm sure thankful for the lights and the power that will run the projector for me. Sometimes it can be, be abused, but 
generally power is, is a good thing. Do we ever give our power away? Uh, we do. We do. You see, every one of us starts out each day with 100% of our power. But depending on how the day goes, we could find ourselves down here at 5%, which means 5% of our thoughts feel good. And when we find ourselves down at 5%, we find ourselves feeling helpless, hopeless, powerless, depressed, and tired. And I don't mean after a workout tired. I mean waking up in the morning, feeling just as tired as you did the night before. 5% of our thoughts feel good down here. Up here, 95% of our thoughts feel good. And when we're at this level, we have enthusiasm, energy, gratitude, joy, love, and hope. Finish these phrases after me, will you please? What goes around? Birds of a feather? Misery loves, but so does joy. These are the kind of people we want to hang around with. These are the kind of people we want to coach. These are the kind of people we want to be in relationships with. I was presenting to a, a company two weeks ago, and, and most of the audience was men. And I said, these are the kind of people you want to be married to, right? And they, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, guess what? The same goes for your partner. These are the kind of people we want to be around. There is a trick to getting from here to here. But Let's talk about tricks. This is my fun magic coloring book. I think I know what you want. I think you want fulfilling relationships, to be productive at work, to accomplish your dreams, But I know sometimes things happen. You get in a fight with your partner. You're so stressed about your grades and you have that big decision that you've got to make. Oh my gosh. Well, then you, you make amends with your partner and, and you found out that you aced that test but things still are not as good as you think they could be. You're still so stressed. You just wish that you would have a life that you dreamed of. What kind of book is this? It's a magic book. But we all know that all magic is is a trick, right? Or actually, it's a process. The trick is, I know the process, and you don't. But if I showed you the process, it wouldn't be magic at all anymore, would it? Would you like to know the, the process or the trick for my magic book? It's right here. It's my thumb. It's the placement of my thumb. The colorful pages are cut long in the middle. The, color, the pages without anything are cut long at the bottom. And the pages with black lines are cut long at the top. I played a trick on you because I drew your eyes away from where I was placing my thumb every time I put it behind my back. That's the trick. And I'm here to tell you that I believe the trick to having a happy, healthy, successful life is the way we look at things. My talk is life. It depends on how you look at it. 
So there's a trick, and I'm going to share it with you. And here's the trick to going from where 5% of your thoughts feel good up to 95%. Give me five. Show me five. Here's the trick. Choose thoughts that feel good. Say it with me, would you? Choose thoughts, thoughts that feel good. good. Choose thoughts that feel good. Or if you prefer, choose thoughts that bring joy. Either one of those work. Choosing our thoughts. Now, as I look at your faces out there, I see some of you are saying, yeah, right. You don't know what my day has been like. So let me see. Let me see the hands of anyone in this room who could, if they wanted to, find something to complain about. Let me see. If there's anyone in this room who could, if they wanted to, find something or think of something they could complain about. Yeah. Is there anyone in this room who could, if they wanted to, think of something they could be thankful for? Let me see those hands. So it's a choice, isn't it? We can choose. And that's part of the trick to our power. You see, when we choose our thoughts, oh, let me show you this. Uh, yeah, these are my son's socks. Yeah, Some of you know David. He came home from college, and these were what were in his dirty clothes. <laughs> I said, David, why on earth would you wear a sock like that? <laughs> he said, well, sometimes they're the only ones that are clean. And I said, well, okay, I get that. <laughs> but just like we choose our socks, we can choose our thoughts. Am I right? Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So when we decide to choose thoughts that feel good, I'd like to explain some of the science behind this. That is what I think is so magnificent about Eight to Great, is the science that now is supporting what M.K. Mueller taught about. There is a neuroscientist in South Africa, her name is Dr. Caroline Leaf, and she has found that our thoughts create protein in the frontal lobe of our brain. And when we choose to think about thoughts that feel good, positive thoughts, it creates a stable protein inside our brains. When we choose to think about thoughts, as she calls them, she's British, so she calls them toxic thoughts. When we choose to think about toxic thoughts, they also form proteins in our brain, but they are unstable proteins. And these proteins excrete chemicals into our system that can make us feel tired, powerless, depressed, <coughs> hopeless, and helpless. When we choose to think of healthy thoughts, these thoughts also excrete chemicals into our system, and one of those chemicals is called dopamine. And dopamine, when it floods our system, turns on all of the learning centers in our brain. It turns on the learning center for memory. It turns on the learning center for comprehension, for creativity for athletic ability. When we choose to think of thoughts that make us feel good, we can flood ourselves with dopamine, which would actually make us, science has shown this, 31% more productive. Show me if, you're, if you'd like to be 31% more productive. Let me see your hands. Yeah, I could stand to be a third more productive. And, and, you know, some days I don't wake up. I, I say I start with 100% of my power, but maybe something happens right away, and I don't feel like I'm at 95. It, it takes an effort. I have to consciously choose thoughts that feel good on purpose. I, there is another 
super highway that I'd like to experiment with you. I, I, it has never failed me, but maybe this group is a little bit different. I would like you to turn to your neighbor or someone near you while I play this music, and I'd like for you to think of all of your favorite things, all of the things that you're thankful for. Understand? Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute. I'm going to start my music, and you share with your neighbor as many things that you can think of in that time, things that you are thankful for. If I can get my music going here. Anybody recognize that song? No. Could you hear it? Oh, I'm sorry. It was my favorite things from Sound of Music. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling bad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. Back in the 1960s, Maria sang about eight to great, and she didn't even know it. Isn't that amazing? Well, guess what I saw? I don't know where you were when you started, but I do know when you were sharing your favorite things, I saw it on your faces. You wound up right here. That is the super highway from 5 to 95. It is so important and it is so crucial Oh, I've been given permission to assign homework. Sean, you told them they were going to have homework, didn't you? Oh. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, well, here's your... <laughs> oh, Joe says he's back to 5%. Stay with me. Here's your homework. Share. And the reason why I sh say share, you'll understand. Share three gratitudes or things we're thankful for, for every 24 hours. And there are two specific guidelines for that. The reason why I said share is because it gives us an accountability partner or team. When I started 8 to Great, I kept a journal and I wrote my gratitudes down. But who knew when I skipped a day? only me. Who helped me remember on days that I forgot? Oh, only me. I'm not that reliable. <laughs> so my husband and I share gratitudes every day now, and it is, it's amazing. Um, let me tell you about the two guidelines. The first guideline is no repeats. Three gratitudes every 24 hours, no repeats. So we can say, you know, family, faith, sports, one time, and then you're done. Except there's one person in this world that can repeat, and that's my husband, because he can say he's thankful for me <laughs> every day. <laughs> no, no. We do share. I say, great. That's great. Now you need three new ones. No. <laughs> you know what it's done for my relationship with my husband? It has caused me to look at him in a grateful way. And I, I guess that when I tell him, I'm thankful for him, but I'm also thankful for that decision <laughs> that he made, or the way he worked out that problem in his business yesterday, what do you suppose that does for him? 
See, it isn't all about me. It starts with me, but it spreads. It's done wonders for our relationship. So, three gratitudes every 24 hours is going to make us scan the world for things to think of because that person that's your gratitude partner, they're going to ask you tomorrow, what are you thankful for? So you better get busy, you know, looking for things to be thankful for. It doesn't have to be big things. Anything that you would miss tomorrow if you didn't have it is something to be thankful for, right? Would you like to know the second guideline? Only do this on the days you want to feel good. Don't worry about it on the other days. All right, so I'm going to just put only plus days. All right. So we've got our gratitudes that are taking us up to 95%. It's changing the structure of our brains. We're growing stable proteins in our brains. And, and we are able to solve problems quicker, more creatively. I do know, I do know life happens. And, and sometimes it is, it's really a chore. But one of the other things that I have learned about is that what we magnify gets bigger. Is my eye bigger? Can you see my eye? What we choose to look at becomes bigger. See, my life is not two-dimensional. It isn't my problem and me. I have a lot more going on in my life. And sometimes it takes will to choose to look at the things that are not my problem. And what happens is dopamine floods my system, and so I might have a more creative idea for solving that problem. It's a win-win situation, isn't it? I would like to share a video that Harvard produced when a young man named Sean Aker studied this. And he found that, it, that Harvard can substantiate what M.K. Mueller wrote in her book earlier than, than they did. So let me share this video. Pretty amazing, huh? All right. If I can do this here, get the right thing on. So, we're learning about being positive in the present. What about a phrase like this? Well, I'll, I'll be happy when. To me, that is a power stealing phrase. We when we choose to be happy in the present is when we have our power. And when we have 95% of our thoughts feel good, we have more of a lot of things. I listed some things here. Enthusiasm, energy, gratitude, joy, love, and hope. Let's do an activity. I need you to get in groups, and you can do them by tables. Just, just make sure you have groups, maybe kind of large groups. You need one person to write things down. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to list as many things you think you would have more of if you felt good, if you were at 95%. There's actually 250 things that you would have more of. So I'm going to challenge you. Get in a group, find someone to write some things down for you. Everybody shout them out, work together, and let's find the things we have more of.
that go? I listed some things up here. I would like to know if you can add to them. Let me hear who thinks they have, who has the biggest list? Raise your hand group who has the biggest list and tell me how many you have. How many do you have on your list? Two. Okay, anybody can top that? These guys have five. Nine over here. Overachievers, awesome. Anybody else can top nine? All right, I have some bracelets for the group that had nine. Okay, whoops. Here, I'm going to just toss them to you. You're going to take care of them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make our group list. I need your help. Tell me some of the things that you think you would have more of. Shout them out. What would you have more of if you felt good? Friends. 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 What else? Time. Time. We're more efficient. Sean Aker told us that. Success. Success. Say it louder. Patience. Patience, yes. Anything else? Money. Money. Yes. Someone over here? Energy. Energy. Very good. Don't we all need that? Fun. Fun. Relationships. Relationships. Oh, dot that. Health, I heard. Yes. Anything else? Oh, I can spell. Power. Power. Yeah. And my favorite is hope. Raise your hand if you'd be interested in having more of any of these things in your life. Who's in charge? We are. I'm writing a book called The Battle Between My Ears, Winning the Battle Between My Ears. And it has to do with choosing what I focus on. I have one more activity and then a quote. Now, if you have your penny, I'd like you to get your penny out. This is our power pyramid and that's how we work through these highways. We take our power and we use it to get our picture, to visualize the dreams that we have. Then we use it to, to risk. Because we can't sit around dreaming our dreams all day, we do have to take some risks to accomplish those dreams. Taking full responsibility is moving from blaming and complaining to acting and dreaming. Feeling all your feelings. When M.K. Mueller wrote this book, she realized that some people got stuck in finding their gratitude because they had feelings that they hadn't learned to manifest and, and to turn mad into anger G and sad into release. Then honest communication, forgiveness, gratitude, and hope. That's the most powerful positive attitude formula there is. Forgiveness for the past, gratitude for the present, and hope for the future. All right, does everyone have their penny? This penny represents my problem. The more I look at my problem, the more I focus on my problem, the less I see of what else is going on around in my life. And I focus more and more and more and more on my problem until that's all I can see. But is there still stuff going on around that? Yeah, you bet there is. My, my choice is to keep my problems the size they really are and enjoy the other things that are going on in the present right now. So there's, there's the power pyramid of eight to great. Is it easy? 
Does it take work? Is it easy? Some days. Is it worth it? Every day. Thank you. Is there any questions? Or comments? I'd love to hear what you think. I do have one thing that I, I need to mention. If anyone has a handout that has a hole punch in the upper right-hand corner, can anybody find a handout with a hole punch up in the right? Oh, you won an eight to great book. And so we'll give you an eight to great book, okay? Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have any questions? Please feel free to take a look at the books back there. If you're interested in some information so that I can stay in contact with you, there's a page back there that we can fill out. And if you're interested in buying a book, they're available for sale, too. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. As Peggy said, the books are back there. And I'm sure her husband would take the money if you're interested in purchasing one. I think it would be one. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.